Disclaimer, I own nothing! So after two really awesome seasons, Netflix's controversial series about a gun-toting anti-hero set in the Marvel Universe finally met its untimely demise at the hand of corporate politics. While I think the show has some of the best acting in a comic book based series to date, and even had some really memorable moments, as a huge fan of the Punisher I felt it lacked severely in one major area, that being the actual Punisher. And no, I don't just mean I was bored because of the show's oftentimes very noticeable pacing issues, or the fact that Frank seemed to wear the skull vest as little as possible so you'd take the show more seriously. While John Bernthal is by far my favorite casting for Frank Castle of all the live action adaptations, and he's a master at making this character charismatic and tragic, I think the sad reality is that he never really got to actually be the Punisher, except in Daredevil Season 2. In Daredevil, Bernthal's Punisher felt ripped straight out of the comics and was a dream come true for fans of the character, which are usually sociopaths, or bearded fat guys, or edgy teenagers with bad video essay opinions. But upon getting his own show, I noticed a shift in his personality. The show started to rewrite or undo a lot of the most interesting things about the Punisher, in my opinion, and in order to make him more likable as a leading man, had to cut back on some of the darker aspects of his personality. Being a major fan of the character, I still love the show, and I think it's worthy of the name, but today I want to talk about why Netflix's Punisher doesn't really get... The Punisher. Right away, the first season starts with an amazing montage of... Well, just Frank being himself. A tactical genius, a violent and unstoppable force of nature, and a man with nothing to lose. Then he gets his revenge and just kind of quits. After that, we can see Frank leading a solitary life as a common worker under a fake name. Which actually in the comics was his real name and the other name is a fake name, whatever. Just trying to distance himself from his violent past and find some new kind of peace. For the rest of the series, Frank struggles with a central conflict that's just kind of wrong for the character. He isn't sure if he wants to keep killing. He's conflicted about taking further steps towards revenge, but finds himself constantly being compelled to it, either by outside sources or by his own internal sadness. But if there's one thing I can associate with the Punisher, it's not having qualms about morality of killing. Let me really ask you, what does the Punisher do? He hunts down and kills criminals forever, regardless if they had anything to do with his family's murder. He's in perpetual war with organized crime, he sleeps in a van or whatever warehouse he can rent out to keep all of his equipment, he devotes his every waking moment to the everlasting battle with the killers and abusers of the world. Does he ever feel bad about it? Does he ever regret any of it? Does he ever want to take a break and live a normal life? Not even once. In order to really dig deep into all of this, I think it's time to really brush up on our knowledge of the history of comic Frank Castle so we can compare him to his streaming service counterpart. After reading so many variations of his origin story, I think I found a major commonality between all these different takes. Frank Castle was conflicted about killing at one point in his life, but now he is not, and he never will be again. Frank discovered during his time in the military that he loves killing people. He feels comfortable when he's in the middle of a war. It gives him purpose, it gives him drive and motivation, and it allows him to be creative and express himself. And it's even an outlet for his aggression. Basically, Frank Castle feels like he's his best self when he's in the middle of a war. And it only feels right if the opponent can fight back, which is why he didn't just start butchering any random Joe on the street after he got discharged. He enjoys a target that requires a strategy and forethought, and he gets off a little on the danger. The thing he was conflicted about was who he could possibly choose for his new war now that his official one had ended. Now he finds himself adjusting to a normal life with a family to take care of and responsibilities as a man that he placed ahead of his urges towards violence. He couldn't let himself just give up being a normal person no matter how much he wanted to hurt people. His love for his family kept him grounded enough to shake off all those urges, but he wasn't truly happy. Sure, he lazily reacclimated to life as a bystander, and life felt empty. Even with his wife Maria and his kids Lisa and Frank Jr., he no longer had a calling or a direction. He certainly wasn't going to unleash his infinite fury on the cops or government or innocent bystanders. He respects good men in uniforms who are just following orders, something Season 2 of Daredevil showcases quite well during Episode 3. But then something tragic and unexpected happens. Frank Castle's family goes on a picnic in Central Park, and they wander too close to a couple of Mafia guys assassinating some poor schmuck. So Frank and his family are executed because these guys can't have any witnesses, but by some miracle or curse, Frank survived his wounds and now things have changed. He found his answer. The magic solution to his inner conflict. 
He no longer had a family and a personal life holding him back or keeping him in the realm of sanity. Everything that pushed him to remain human and good was gone. And worse yet, he now had a target that he could go to war with and feel no guilt over. He doesn't respect hitmen, drug pushers, and cop killers, and he knows they'll always fight back, presenting him with new challenges so he can adapt and overcome. Frank lost his family that day, but he found himself. His true calling in life was dropped right in his lap, and now he can use all sorts of excuses to justify it as some kind of moral crusade. He mourns his family and he misses them, but he avenged them after almost a few days of being the Punisher. They can't be his sole motivation for doing what he does. Sure, he tries to promote the moral high ground aspect and preach that the law doesn't work, but that's all just bravado, really. He argues that he's there to protect the world in a way that the law can't. But we all know that the idea that no one gets a trial, no one can be rehabilitated, and no one deserves a second chance is... Well, kinda bullshit. Look at guys like Wolverine, Deadpool, or Venom. They were all killers and psychopaths at some point, but all three of them became members of the Avengers at some other point. And even Frank gives them a pass and works with them instead of just making it his personal mission to annihilate them, knowing full well they've hurt innocent people. His philosophy is full of exceptions, contradictions, and hypocrisy. He even dated Elektra for a couple years, on and off, knowing full well she was an assassin and not every hit she made in her career was on someone deserving. But he got her presents, like the bronzed heart of a crime boss they killed together. And they went on cute little dates. Yeah, you're really keeping the bad people off the streets, Frank. The fact is, Frank really could have chosen anyone to start his new war with, because strategically killing armed opponents is his happy place and it was an eventuality that he'd go back to it. But hardened criminals just happen to fit his criteria well enough and he doesn't have to feel any lingering guilt over it. There is no moral conflict for him. And if you still don't believe me, let me show you Exhibit C, or 4, I don't know. Punisher kills the Marvel Universe. Like, like, almost a whole decade before even Deadpool did it, that's impressive. Any knowledgeable Punisher fan knows that the majority of the Punisher's best stories come from writer Garth Ennis. He's the madman behind Punisher Max, which the Netflix shows and 2008 film Punisher Warzone both take heavy inspiration from. And he's behind Marvel Knight's Punisher, which was the inspiration for the 2004 film and most of Daredevil Season 2's Punisher stuff. His stories have informed and shaped the character so heavily that I think it's safe to say he knows what he's talking about in regards to the character. I'll have to admit some bias though, because Ennis' run on Punisher Max is my favorite comic run of all time, and I hold everything else with the character's name on it to that standard of quality. Early on in his career with the character, Ennis wrote the story of an Elseworld where Frank's family is killed in the collateral damage of a big superhero battle involving the X-Men and the Avengers. And what does he do? He starts going after superheroes and villains. Even though the heroes are objectively good and honorable people, he still justifies it to himself that they deserve it and he's doing the right thing. Until ultimately he saves the last bullet for himself after wiping them out because killing good people was too much for him. Frank Castle doesn't want or care about revenge and he certainly isn't averse to violence or conflicted about it unless he thinks he's done it to someone undeserving. If he feels like he's killing people who deserve it, he'll never flinch. Frank only finds himself conflicted if he hurts someone who isn't a bad person, which even then, he doesn't want to admit because of his pride. He'd rather die than admit he was in the wrong. Because of all this, Frank Castle is one of the most interesting fictional characters out there to me. But I'll still say, if you find his method and ideology totally reasonable, you're just as out of touch with reality as he is. Which brings us to Netflix Punisher. In Daredevil Season 2, he's everything he needs to be. He's driven, remorseless, brutal, and excessive. He humiliates his biggest detractor, Daredevil, by forcing him to break his own moral code. He comes up with elaborate and conniving plans like putting a corpse decoy in a truck for the police to shoot at, or placing a razor blade in his own arm to free himself after getting caught on purpose. And he even admits that killing felt good to him. He takes every opportunity he can to hurt bad people. Like this creep who tries to sell him videos of underage girls when he just needed information. This is the most Punisher moment in the history of ever. This guy had nothing to do with his revenge plot. He didn't have to kill this guy, but boy did he want to. So he did. And he can sleep like a baby at night knowing he only took out his rage on someone that was a scumbag. 
It's easy to have Frank act more like himself when he's the antagonist and eventual reluctant backup for the hero of the story, because that's exactly what he was conceived as, a villain turned anti-hero. And after trying to kill Spider-Man, he eventually decided to help him out because he felt no honor in killing him because Spider-Man's not a dick. But John Bernthal gave an insanely compelling performance. He just oozes charisma, even as this morally gray character who does insanely questionable shit for flimsy reasons. He steals every scene and upstages every character. When Punisher is not on screen, all other characters should be asking, where's Punisher? And they pretty much do. I found myself constantly getting bored with the hand and Elektra stuff. Just get back to the good part, what's Frank doing? Daredevil Season 2 serves as a perfect introduction and origin story for him, even without showing the events at the park in full view. We don't need to see his family get killed at the park, or flashbacks of him being a dad. Everything we needed to know is spoken through his monologue. While it breaks the show-don't-tell rule pretty egregiously, it's such an emotional scene and so beautifully performed that it paints a picture for us that visuals probably wouldn't be able to match up to. So again, they got him pretty on point in Daredevil, but now we get to him in his own solo show, and he's just Wolverine. Okay, don't freak out. We're gonna shift gears here for a second. I'm gonna just describe a random Wolverine story, and I want you to follow me here because I'm leading to something. We start with Wolverine, known badass and cool guy, living somewhere kind of quiet and remote, doing something rather menial. Maybe he's just in an apartment reading books all day and occasionally going down to the nearby diner to get breakfast as part of his daily routine. Maybe he's just living in the woods and trying to take in nature. Maybe he's working as a logger with his girlfriend and he's pretty happy with it. Hell, he could just be living in some old rundown building and paying his bills by driving a limo service. But then, something random happens that requires him to unleash his rage and kill again after swearing it off for however long. He gets a taste of the old ultra-violence, and that segues him into the main adventure of the story where he has to go after some bad guy that's wronged him or someone he cares about. Throughout the story, he proves to be a proficient killer, which both impresses and frightens his allies. And every time he kills someone else, he feels both an exhilaration and a shame he can't quite decide between. He's constantly battling with his inner demons. He was used to become a machine for war his whole life, and now he's afraid that it's all he's capable of as he pines for something more. He has to ask himself constantly, do I like doing sick radical execution moves on dudes while he's covered in entrails? He then succeeds in defeating the villain through the use of his inner rage, but also shows a spark of compassion as well to let us know that the anger in his heart hasn't completely won. Then he rides off into the sunset hoping to settle down again with some new status quo before violence enters his life once again. That's exactly the fucking plot of both seasons of Punisher. Frank does a menial job, accidentally has to punish because he can't leave well enough alone, then gets roped into a mission to take down a bad guy, then gets sad and goes home. And I get it, I understand the decision to just make him Wolverine. Because Wolverine is likable and compelling to a mainstream audience. We can understand his struggle and we can empathize with the fact that he is pulled back into situations where he doesn't want to be. His inner conflict and hesitancy towards kill-stabbing people gives him humanity. The unfortunate reality, though, is that this is the exact opposite of the Punisher. Frank Castle is a scary concept, really. He's an unhinged and violent man that only finds solace in taking human lives. But he builds himself up on a perceived moral high ground so he doesn't have to pay attention to any of the people telling him that what he's doing is wrong. He can just shut out the criticism and say, uh, you guys are a bunch of sissies, I'm the real hero, while he continues to be, by definition, a serial killer. I don't find the Punisher fascinating or interesting because I agree with his methods and viewpoint. I find him to be an amazing character because it's interesting to get into the mindset and philosophies of someone that is so far gone. It's the same kind of feeling you get from watching a documentary series about some nutjob like Ted Kaczynski. The Punisher is a man with no humanity left. For him, it's only his obsession with the ongoing war that he's chosen of his own free will to partake in. He's just going after any and every mafia dirtbag he can find for decades in the comics because it's fun for him. Sometimes he'll mix it up a little and chase a supervillain or a terrorist cell in the Middle East, but all that really matters to him is keeping the game going, not wiping out all crime. It goes without saying that killing every killer in the world is an impossible goal, and he's content with that. He's the dog that chases his own tail forever, knowing full well that he won't ever get it, because it's not about catching the tail. 
John Bernthal's Frank Castle never finds himself at this point of becoming utterly hollow. He comes damn close, but he doesn't quite reach that well-oiled, unfeeling, unwavering machine of death. Maybe given a few more seasons of the show, we could have finally gotten that. But as of season two, the series ends with him just on the cusp. Bernthal's Punisher never just randomly hunts down a group of criminals to mow down for catharsis. Every person he hunts in season two of Daredevil is directly related to his family's death. And then in season one of his show, it gets a little repetitive by revealing it was all just some crazy Jason Bourne conspiracy cover-up to take him out of the picture. Which is then punctuated by an entirely new group of dozens and dozens of people he needs to get revenge on, while building up to wearing the skull. He essentially has to go through the same character arc twice in a row, and by season two of his own show, he's just along for the ride in this other conspiracy theory that he just gets randomly sucked into with his own teen sidekick. He never really gets to be the Punisher we know from the books. And I completely and totally understand why. It's hard to make a character like that marketable. The emotionless, crazed, obsessive, driven psychopath is kind of hard to sell as the hero to mainstream audiences, and the only other example of something like that started to suck after three seasons. It's easier to buy a tortured, conflicted guy trying to run from his past than what the Punisher actually is. He's just death incarnate in a pair of combat boots and a trench coat. And given the current political climate in the world surrounding gun violence, mental illness, the treatment of veterans, and the relationship between police and violence on the streets, holy hell is it a complicated issue to tackle someone like the Punisher. The show was already controversial enough and they had to completely rework some of those more sketchy elements out of his character. Can you imagine the media controversy that would spark if he really did just lose it and start hunting down complete strangers at random like in the comics? Like, someone who's never wronged him or come in any contact with him and he just finds them and kills them. That's not heroic. There's no revenge there. It's just evil. So it makes sense to put him in a more personal story where he's avenging his family's deaths only or then followed up with a story where he's trying to protect a vulnerable and scared young girl from corrupt officials and crazed yokels. His antagonists need to be something a little more personal for this show to avoid all that... drama. And they did manage to take a pretty down-to-earth look at the element of mental health issues in veterans, despite ignoring some of the other themes. I think a show about a more traditional Punisher could really get people thinking about and exploring some very topical themes given the state of things. But it was easier to make this appeal to mass audiences if they eased off the parts that were more morally ambiguous. Again, I'd like to make it clear that I think the two biggest factors were both making this character marketable and appealing to casual viewers, and avoiding controversy. The former being the more prominent one in my eyes, but that part I think is most easily up for debate. Despite his inaccuracies to the source material, I can still find this version of Prank Castle The Punisher to be really interesting to follow, and it's a damn shame we won't get to see more of him, even if he didn't become more like the comics as the show went on. He's one of many examples of characters having to be changed in order for an adaptation to be financially viable, much like Spidey, Deadpool, Thor, or Ant-Man. And while it's unfortunate that sometimes the fact that Hollywood is a business becomes an overshadowing factor in the final product, The Punisher show still was a great take on the character and it's sad to see it go. Whether he's conflicted about being who he is or not, John Bernthal will always be unforgettable as the skull-adorned madman with an itchy trigger finger. Here's hoping this isn't the last we see of old Frankencastle. Big thanks to my buddy Lord Cheddar, aka Scott, for editing this video. I haven't seen it yet because I'm just talking into a microphone in a room by myself right now, but I can already tell that it came out fantastic. So go check out his videos, and if you want to hear me talk about The Punisher a little bit more, I also did a review of the PS2 Punisher game written by Garth Ennis and starring Thomas Jane. Go look at that. I think I, think I did a good job on it. N next is Hulk. <laughs>